Hi everybody! Last week I hope you enjoyed learning about um, what goes into our road trip planning. This week we have some tips for cruising with babies and toddlers. Yay. We have a lot of experience with not only babies but also toddlers because Christian's first cruise was at 18, 14, 14 months. 14 months, yep. And then Isabella's was at nine months. Mm -hmm. And we've cruised with them many, many times. Christian is uh, at his eight, he's just sailed on his eighth cruise, and Isabella's on her third. Her third. So we've got a lot of experience. In and this. they're two and six now, so yeah. got a few. Yeah, so we've got experiences with not only the kids club uh, extensively with Christian, but also the the nursery mm -hmm. uh, with Isabella and, and Christian uh, on a multitude of ships. Mm -hmm. uh, we did it on the Fantasy. I think we've done it on every ship except yep. the Dream. Yeah, because uh, Christian was uh, too young on the Magic to go to the kids club. So. Yep. Yeah, so we got a lot of good tips uh, for you guys to pick up on and possibly incorporate into your your planning. So keep in mind, um, not so much with these tips, but when we do our big overarching tip um, video, things are going to change after all of this coronavirus stuff is over, and you know, once cruising starts back up again, we don't know what changes all are going to be made, but. Um, Things could change between now and when sailing starts again. So not everything that we say today will be 100% correct for then. Um, it's more of a, this is our experience on past cruises yep. type of thing. Yeah. All right, so tip number one, don't overpack. Think, oh, the kid needs toys and diapers and this and all this. Babies have a lot of stuff. Yep, they do. At one point, we we traveled. I mean, it wasn't on a Disney cruise, but it was just a Disney World where we'd just done a vacation in Pittsburgh, and we had a lot of stuff. Um, it was also our first trip with Christian, though, so yeah. it was. We learned. Yeah, we learned. It was a month long trip, though, so mm -hmm. we had stuff. Um, we've learned since then mm -hmm. how to. Uh, how to pack efficiently and how to make sure we have what we yes. need. Obviously with a, a toddler or someone one that's in diapers, make sure that you plan on uh, how many diapers, yeah. try and gauge how many they're using per day, and then keep just extras, honestly, just in case you, you run out, because obviously you don't want to buy diapers on the ship. They are available, but I would rather bring my own. We did have to buy swim diapers once though. Yeah, we did, but that wasn't too, too bad. It was actually pretty was reasonably, reasonably priced. priced, yeah. Um, so obviously take diapers mm -hmm. you, if your little one is in diapers. Luckily, we're done with diapers. We don't have to worry <laughs> about that anymore. Um, yeah. But we have, you know, um, Christian did two cruises, three cruises, in, no, two, it was two. Two cruises in diapers, Bella's done three cruises in diapers. So we have experience with cruising with uh, someone in diapers. Mm -hmm. What we've normally done, and for Disney World, and going anywhere really, is a lot about eight diapers a day, mm -hmm. and then one extra per day, just in case. Um, you know, excitement, it gets them a little bit out of their, their regular rhythm. Mm -hmm. So, with that, take the diapers out of the sleeve. the sleeve and just stick them where they fit in the suitcase and some in like your your day bag obviously mm -hmm. and your carry on um, that way you have some but the sleeve of diapers isn't taking up you dope. know a quarter of a suitcase or yeah. whatever and the good thing about diapers is that they bend and they're easy to to mold around things yeah. so I mean they if you do it right, you can get a bunch of diapers in not a lot of space. We've put them in the suitcase. We've put some in my day bag, put your my, deep, yeah, your day my, bag, yeah. some in like put it, the put computer bag. <laughs> yeah, we put them pretty much everywhere that you can think. But to just put. make them fit. Mm -hmm. um, so don't take too much. Um, there's bottle warmers. 
-hmm. on board and if you try and bring one they'll take it anyway yeah um bed rails pack and plays diaper genies all available on board the ship yeah all you have to do is request it yeah and as far as like toys are concerned obviously like we mentioned uh last week with the keep the kids entertained kind of thing make sure that you don't overpack yeah. too many uh toys we do bring some um not a whole lot onto the ship though because there's not a lot of time yeah a lot of times we're not spending a whole amount of time in the the room so we're out on deck we're meeting characters so they're they're distracted by that they're having a good time with that so you don't But something really small to, to distract them at dinner while they're waiting for their foods good too yeah um or if your they kid mostly ha have their tablets yeah for that. if your kid has a comfort item definitely don't forget that uh, that would be, as parents know, detrimental if it's their favorite thing. Yeah. So don't pack too much. Mm -hmm. um, we just mentioned a little bit. Um, make requests. Mm -hmm. Make requests for those uh, bed rails, bottle warmers, diaper genies, um, all that stuff. Keep in mind, if you make a request for bed rails and your child is under four, you will have to call to do so. It's so weird. I don't know. I've talked to two or three cast members before to get the bed rails added, and under four is when they need the bed rails. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once they're four... It's not really that big of a deal, but if you've got a rolly kid, kind of like uh, Isabella and Christian for that matter, it, it's good to have, but I mean... It's with, just weird. With both cruises that we've been on, uh, all three of them with Isabella, She's had no problem sleeping in the bed with bed She's rails. She's just been so tired at the mm -hmm. end of the day that... She usually doesn't move very much. I no. mean, and Christian didn't really either, so... No, he's not really rolling much anymore. But he's also no. up on the top bunk, mm -hmm. which has a rail no matter what. Yep. Yeah. Um, next, so maximizing your packing space. We, we just talked about that as well. Take the diapers out of their bags. Mm -hmm. Um, roll your your clothes make everything fit uh, and one big thing with maximize your uh, packing space is make sure to leave a little bit of room for those souvenirs inevitably there's gonna be something that you find in one of the gift shops or it, with traveling with kids they're gonna want a toy or something from the the experience so yeah. it, it can range from something small to something large um, and Which with that, was one of the good things about driving. Yep. <laughs> we didn't have to Chris worry about that. Chris wanted the pirate ship, and yeah. and well, with that we also took it out of the packaging. Yes. Uh, we let him open it, and we we broke it down so it was a little bit more compact. But um, make sure that you're you're saving that that room for souvenirs and stuff, especially if it's going to be your first Disney cruise. Uh, next tip is swim diapers. So if your child is in diapers still, make sure you have swim diapers or be prepared to buy them in the gift shop. Because if your child is not fully potty trained, they will not be allowed in the splash area without swim diapers. And if your child is not fully potty trained, the splash area is the only place that they can go. Okay, Swimming pools are only for children that are fully potty trained. So. It just keeps things clean. Yeah, or, definitely. Um, but like we said, there are swim diapers available in the gift shop. We did have to buy them once because mm -hmm. I think once we forgot to pack them, yeah. they were on the pile and they just didn't get packed. Yeah. And then another time, we didn't have enough swim diapers. Yeah, when you're swimming a couple times a day, yeah. You're... No more diapers for us. We're done. We're so yep. glad. That's definitely a good thing. Um, and then take advantages of, advantage of the open houses, whether it's the teen or the tween areas, but also just the regular nurseries. Um, it allows you to go in there, get your kid mostly acquainted with the uh, crew staff that are going to be uh, in the small world nursery, um, but it also allows them to just kind of get comfortable in that area with you. Uh, kids that haven't really been out on their own might be apprehensive when it comes to uh, new places so introducing them to those areas is always important during those uh, open houses and Bella also really loved going to open house 
in the Oceaneer Club because she's not old enough for it yet, but she got to go down the slinky dog slide on the mm -hmm. wander. She got to go play in Andy's room and climb on the bed and sit on Rex and crawl through um, Slinky Dog on the Dream. Yeah. She didn't really care much on fantasy, but she was too small for that anyway. But once they're like one, they're running around, they want to play, they want to have fun, take them to open house. It's, there's an open house every single day. Again, this could change, but I don't really see how much. No. Anyway, so let them go, let them play. You know, it's, it's a great time for them to get used to it mm -hmm. especially for you know the next cruise when they are three they are old enough to be in there by themselves it's something to get them excited yep definitely is okay so the next is kids menus there are, is a kids menu your child does not have to order from it if they do not want to yep. if your child wants to order roast duck like christian did when he was three yeah it was yeah, on it was, the, it was on the uh, back to back, it was, back, so back yeah. he was three if your kid wants roast duck, let him eat roast duck. Mm -hmm. Christian likes, to, well, not anymore. He used to like to order carrot cake from the dessert menu, but now that it has pineapple on it, he doesn't like it. Yeah. Um, you know, they are not required to order from the children's menu. And if they don't like something on that menu, let them take a look at mm -hmm. the, the regular menu. They can order something from it, and if nothing there interests them either, Ask your server for, you know, something that they like and the, the kitchen staff will be more than happy to work with you to yeah. make your child happy. Like we've said, Christian has ordered grilled cheese. Last time he ordered just a cheese sandwich. Mm -hmm. He has ordered a peanut butter sandwich. He ordered hot dogs and there was one night that pizza wasn't on the menu but he wanted pizza. Mm -hmm. And it's really... Obviously, let them take a look at what's on the menu, but if they don't want that, talk to your dining staff, and they're more than accommodating. They've gone across the ship. I, I think one one uh, meal on on the Fantasy on our Star Wars cruise, Christian wanted uh, peanut butter, peanut butter, and our yeah. head server he went up to the buffet went, to get it. Yep, he went to the buffet just to get that for us, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking just. Our regular waitstaff team, but our our head server, you know, in would, charge of half the dining room. Yeah, was so. like, hey, you. I heard that you would like this. Is that still something you want? Yes. Okay. And cool. It. And he went and got it for yeah. us, and we were at in Shannon Garden on on deck two, so he yeah. went all the way up there to get that for us. And then um, what else? Oh, a cup on this last cruise, Christian was kind of into carrots for a while. He goes through phases of what vegetable he likes. Mm -hmm. He wanted just carrots. So the steamed vegetables that normally come with the kids' meal have carrots, but he just wanted carrots, so they just brought him carrots yep. instead of the broccoli and the cauliflower. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of times he's wanted just a banana mm -hmm. instead of the. That was what they went to go get the peanut butter for. Well, he wanted the apple slices. Maybe. Either way. He's requested apple or banana um, a couple of times. He's not he's not really a fan of the steak fries in the dining room. Mm -hmm. He's requested mashed potatoes. So there was one meal I remember it on the back to back. We were getting towards the end of being on the ship for 14 nights, and he just wanted normal food because we don't eat you know chicken tenders and even hot dogs and stuff mm -hmm. like that at home all the time. So he wanted something normal. So he ordered a grilled cheese with a banana and mashed potatoes. Yep. And they brought it. We've heard um, someone's sitting next to us, their child wanted uh, scrambled eggs for dinner. Yep. And they brought scrambled eggs. So, you know, <laughs> they will do their best to make it so that you are happy. Mm -hmm. If it's something that has to do with allergies though, be sure to coordinate with Disney Cruise Line before you get on the ship that way mm -hmm. things run more smoothly yeah. for you. Be because none of us have any food allergies. We don't have experience with that. But that gives me an idea for another blog post because we have done Disney, Disney World, World with, with my sister who has allergies and they bent over backwards to make sure that she ate like a queen on that trip yeah and it's very similar they they're very conscious about it when we asked about the peanut butter uh our head server was like yeah i'm tracking all of these allergies at these different tables and he he almost rattled them off exactly as he had it as it in his his sheet so they're very conscious about 
uh, different allergies that people have and making sure that they don't, they, if there is, if they order something that they get, get what they want, but within their, al uh, without their allergen in there. Yeah. They want you to be happy, but they also want you to be safe. Yep. Safety. And even throughout this whole, uh, pandemic, we've, we've heard nothing but safety is the top priority. And that's definitely true of Disney Cruise Line. They won't do anything that's going to jeopardize crew or passenger safety. Mm -hmm. 100%. So, um, the next is It's a Small World Nursery. Be sure to book a couple of hours for your little one to be in there so you can get some time to go to Polo or to just mm -hmm. sit out on deck and do whatever. Um, we talked about it a little bit, I think, in one of the uh, the over the, uh, days overview, I don't remember which one, um, but we talked about it a little bit. So, it's a small world nursery is for children six months to three years old. Um, if they are three years old and they are not potty trained, they cannot go to the Oceaneer Club or Lab, so they can still be in the nursery until they turn four. Mm -hmm. However, from experience. Christian absolutely hated the nursery when he was two and a half. Has nothing to do with the nursery. It's no. an amazing space. There's so much for the kids to do. He just said, and I quote, it's for babies. Yeah. Because at that point, he was already potty trained and it. it he had to go over to, to the, the club, club to, use, to the use the bathroom on the Wonder just because mm -hmm. that's how the ship is set up. Yeah. Um, on the Dream, I'm not sure about the fantasy, but I went and I talked to the the nursery staff mm -hmm. on the dream and there is a, a potty in the nursery but that was not the case on the wonder um and so christian had to go and you know he wanted to be with the bigger kids because he was so close to being three and mm -hmm. he was so ready to just be over there yeah now bella has enjoyed the nursery mm -hmm. there are a lot of cool toys in the nursery. oh definitely that while at open house on the wonder no, on the dream this last time, Christian was playing with the toys at five years old. So, kids are finicky. You know, it's just he wanted to be more grown up. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things I have read from people who they're two and a half, they're even three year olds really love the nursery because they don't want to be with the bigger kids mm -hmm. or the club or the lab are too overwhelming for them. It's really up to, you know, what your kid likes to do. Yeah. But once Christian turned three and he was ready to be in that club, we said, okay, have fun. Um, the nursery does come at an extra cost, though. It is $9 per hour, which is really good it's based bad, on, yeah. you know, babysitting rates and stuff. Mm -hmm. The reason there is a cost is because they're smaller children and they need more um, attention. They need to have... Smaller ratio yeah. to, of cast to to kids um whereas it's i think a one to 20 or one to i think it's about a one to 20 ratio of cast to kids in the club it's a i think a one to four something like that it, i'm it, not exactly sure yeah because and they definitely need it because if a kid is getting fussy then that one cast member is mm -hmm. dedicated pretty much to that kid um and if they fall asleep on them it, then they're out of the game and you've only got three that are running around with the other kids. So yeah. it's definitely a needed thing. The nursery's great though. You know, there's toys of all, you know, interest and mm -hmm. age from the tiny little babies to the almost three year olds. Mm -hmm. um, for the older ones, they play a Disney movie in there. There's um, arts and crafts. Bella made something. I don't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. Christian made something when he was in the club, uh, yeah. nursery too. Um, there's, you know, they'll feed them a meal mm -hmm. if you're there at mealtime. Even snacks and yeah. stuff. Um, there's cribs for them to nap, change diapers and all that. But if you send your child to the nursery, you will need to provide diapers, wipes, formula, mm -hmm. any of that stuff that they will require during their time in there. You will also need to fill out a form every time you check your child into the nursery with, yes, I want my child fed, um, any special requests. This is what they have with them. This is when I will be picking them up. Mm -hmm. Also, I learned this from someone else that was checking their child in. 
say you provide the diaper rash cream, you have to put in these special instructions that you want this cream put on your child. They will not do it if you do not say so. Hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, they are, they are keeping your child and themselves safe. True. You know, um, so they're very good about it. Um, once Christian took a nap in the nursery, they write when your child falls asleep, when they wake up, when they change their diaper. And they even break down like what was in the diaper. They'll tell you if uh, if it was just pee, if it was pee and poop, or what it was, what time, and they're very detailed yeah, about that. Yeah, I mean, the nursery is great. So if you want some time to just, you know, relax and hang warm. out, one kid's in the club, but we want to go to Paulo, we need something for this other one to do. Mm -hmm. So nursery it is. Yeah. Um, you can book up to, I think it is 18 hours in advance. Sounds like a lot, but for like a seven night cruise, you know, yeah. um, I think we used six hours on this last cruise though, mm -hmm. because we do spend a lot of time with Bella, um, and Christian just spends a lot of time in the club every night after dinner and sometimes during the day. Yep. Um, reserve your times. When you do online check-in, though, because they do run out. Mm -hmm. And now they might even decrease capacity in the nursery to an even smaller number based on changes. But again, we don't know. Speculation. I don't like speculation. So, um, run around. You want to talk about running around? The kids run around all the time. <laughs> they, they love deck four. Uh, it's not very crowded, especially most if you of the time. most of the time. If you go up like mid morning, you've got the people that are outside running around deck four or playing, uh, shuffleboard. Or playing shuffleboard. But I mean, for the most part, you can find a section or a, a little piece of real estate that you can just let the kids go wild. It's not the pool deck, so you don't have to worry about them bumping into people because I mean, the pool deck's just crowded most yeah. of the time, anyways. Regardless of what ship you're on. Another great time to go out is after first seating mm -hmm. for dinner. It's nice and cool usually, or it's really hot depending on what itinerary you're sailing. Not super crowded. Yeah. The Bella kids... loves to just go and run between like the mid and aft doors and mm -hmm. just keep going back and forth. Yeah, and with a little bit older kids like she was, I mean, you just have one parent post up at one section and you just tell them to run back and forth and get some, a really good thing is it gets them ready for bed yeah. and gets them even more worn out and gets them ready, all tuckered out so that it's a really quick uh, process to put them to bed. So, yeah. and for uh, Miria loves to go out at 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning and run around deck four because it's what, uh, three laps to a mile? It depends on the ship. Yeah, which one's three laps to a mile? Though? Three laps to a mile is the wonder and the magic, and then the two bigger ships, it's two and a half laps. <laughs> so you so, really need to pay attention. And another thing to note with that is if you're docking, um, yeah. you need to go up earlier because as soon as you or dock, gym. or go to the gym, because once mooring operations start on the it's wonder gorgeous. and the magic, you can't actually go around in front or aft, but on the bigger ships, because they're a little bit taller, the mooring operations is are secluded from guest areas, so you won't actually, the reason why is, as anybody that's been on the Magic or the Wonder know that as you come around the, the forward or aft areas, you can actually well, see where the mooring lines are. It's, more, it's mostly just forward. Most of forward, but. Anyway, okay, so, um, Ice cream. What kid doesn't love ice cream? What our kids kid doesn't love ice like ice cream. I love ice cream. Okay. Yes. But our kids also love ice cream. Um, and all four ships have I ice cream. It's got Mike Wazowski. It's funny. Okay, anyway, um so this is one thing that's definitely we, we know without a doubt is going to change. Mm -hmm. Um Soft serve ice cream in the past, it's been you walk up, you get your own cone. Um, we, we've there seen... will be a cast member, most likely, at least for the next good while, yeah, we've, to get you your ice cream. We've seen procedures like this before when a ship uh, might have a, a possible outbreak of norovirus. Uh, there'll be a cast member that's serving you your ice cream or getting you your uh, drinks. drinks. It's not uncommon, but 
logic says that's what we're going to see when it comes to when uh, the, when the cruise lines do reopen. So but it's not it's a bad not a big thing. Big you deal. still get your ice cream. Um, we were talking to Christian about it actually last weekend. We like to do um, hot chocolate with ice cream. Mm -hmm. So we'll get a cup of hot chocolate and put some vanilla ice cream in it. So now it'll be we walk up to the drink station. We ask the cast member for a hot chocolate. We walk to the ice cream station. We ask the cast member for vanilla ice cream. We walk off to the side and combine them. <laughs> it's not a huge deal. No. Um, the amenities will still be available mm -hmm. and everyone will be safe because let me tell you, as much as I'd love to be able to walk up and get my own ice cream and, or, you know, put it on some cookies, you can still do it off to the side. Mm -hmm. And there are some people who, as much as you or I am not gross and use the, the hand wipes that are there and, you know, we Only don't touch, touch one and cone. There are some people and some kids who go mm -hmm. up there and they make a gigantic mess. Yep. So. Yeah. I and I mean, I every time I go to the ice cream thing, mostly when it, they have blueberry ice cream, I try and make a, a Dairy Queen style like huge cone. You may not get that. Um, Sass for two. <laughs> yeah, Sass for two. You see one? Oh, hey, can I? Get another and benefit with that is maybe you want to try two flavors that are in two different machines go for it get two cones so the point of this tip is uh if you like ice, ice cream. cream and your kids like ice cream get ice cream but yeah. it's not just for kids okay no. it's for everyone it is <laughs> um that kind right. of brings us down to our next point of uh needing help now i personally and, and married to some point too uh we try and do things as much as we can on our own without needing help. But sometimes you just, you need help. And it could be in the instance of you, like maybe you're at the gym and I've got the kids and they want breakfast. Um, Christian can carry his stuff on his own, but then I'm trying to build a plate for Isabella. I'm trying to get my food. A lot of times what we've encountered with this situation, or even when just you and I'm right behind you carrying your plate, a cast member that's on the buffet line will actually come up to you, hey, can can I help you? And the it's they'll not... They'll carry your plate yeah. and get your stuff for you. But that's another thing that will, will almost change. for sure yep. be changing, at least for a little while. Um, we've read multiple posts online um, on sailing pages that we're on uh, for our upcoming sailings. Mm -hmm. about, you know, um, when this all first started, but cruising was still happening, cast members, uh, they would take your plate and, or they would be stationed at each, um, thing on the buffet and they will put your food on your plate for you. Again, yeah. doesn't bother me. They don't put enough, ask for a little more. <laughs> yeah. And another cool thing, moving on to slightly, uh, stuff that we can speak to that we've seen in the past is uh, along with, with needing help, say like I, was, I wasn't feeling too great, but if I wanted dessert and you didn't want to carry it around, we've seen it to where our, our uh, table mates, they asked for dessert, but they asked our server to send it up to their room. There was also one night where like half the family was super seasick mm -hmm. And their whole, they had their whole dinner taken back yeah. to their, their state room. Yeah, they had one, the one person that was uh, feeling okay, they, they ordered for them and had, had their, their food sent up to the room. Mm -hmm. It was really easy. It's not, not super difficult. They just played it and then they ask uh, room service to deliver it. And yeah, it worked out well. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. The next one, again, we foresee, at least for a little bit, this one changing as characters. Um, we mm -hmm. know from reports from Shanghai Disneyland and from Disney World and Disneyland for their reopening plans that character meet and greets will not be taking place, at least for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, once that's over and characters are a thing again, because... None of this is going to last forever. No. There will be character meet and greets again sometime in the future. Mm -hmm. So, once they come back, meet the characters. If your kid has a favorite character, like Donald Duck, it's mm -hmm. Christian's right now. He only wanted to meet Donald Duck and Chippendale and Pluto. He wanted to meet those characters, so we met and met those characters. Bella wanted to meet Mickey every chance she got. So we went and met Mickey yeah, he did. a lot of times. Uh, so much Mickey. 
um, meet the characters. And again, we don't know what's going to happen, but they've said that at Shanghai and um, Disney World and Disneyland, they will make it so that there is an opportunity to not so much go up and meet a character and take a picture with them, but to see characters. So even if, you know, it's just another deck party or something, mm -hmm. it's an opportunity to see the characters. So if your kid likes characters, go see the characters, you know? Mm -hmm. Changing stations. Now, anybody that's traveled with toddlers, they know, especially ones that are in, in, uh, in diapers, changing stations are a vital thing. Um, they're great so that you don't have to go back to your room. They're most places. Most. Um, Not all. Up on... Up on the pool deck, I think they've got one in each of them, mm -hmm. but down in the lower sections of the ship, um, like around deck four or five. Uh, Most of the ones in the common areas have them outside of restaurants. Yeah. And then um, there's on a couple of decks, I can't remember off the top of my head which ones, um, they have a, a family restroom that has a changing mm -hmm. table in it. They're Not every restroom has a changing table in it. Mm -hmm. I did have to give up at one point. It just, I went back to the room because I was sick of hunting for one. Yeah. And <laughs> but there are more, set. the bigger ships have, have more. more because they have more space. space. Um, be sure if you are trying to find one with a changing table, if you can't and you can't figure it out, either ask a cast member, but for the most part, they will be in the handicapped stall. Mm -hmm. So that's where right you will that. find them most of the time. That is where they are on the pool deck as well. Mm -hmm. um, shopping. Oh, yes. Okay, so if you run out of something, diapers, wipes, whatever, and you, or you accidentally forget something, like swim diapers, or the situation that we ran into where Christian got a really bad diaper rash because yeah. he had sand in his diaper at Castaway Key. That was mostly his own fault because he kept on putting sand in his diaper. But still, but... he got a diaper rash. Mm -hmm. And so we bought some diaper rash cream on the ship because, well, we needed, we needed it. it. And any parent will attest to this. Your kid needs it. You don't care what, what the price is going to be. You pay for it and you just go on with life. The thing with that diaper rash cream... It was the same price as at Walmart, mm -hmm. and it was the best diaper rash cream we've ever used. It really was. It, was it worked in like a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. So, just be aware that if you need something for your your little one to include outfits, the shops are more than ready to to help with that. So you just gotta you know fork over some money. Yep. Um. The next thing is if your child loves Cheerios. You're not going to find them on the ships because Disney doesn't have a contract with them. Yep. They have a contract with Kellogg. Yeah. So you'll see a lot of Kellogg food. But um, one thing that you can do is you the yep, the individual boxes of Cheerios. You can stick those in your, your carry-on bag. Just make sure that they are sealed. Yes, it has to be sealed. It has to be sealed, factory sealed. So that's why I would encourage you, instead of taking like a huge thing, Unless take you the, think your kid's going to eat that much cheerio. If they're going to eat it all. But again, getting on and off the ship, it has to be factory sealed. Um, yes. So if you take a whole box and they don't eat it all, you technically are not allowed to get off the ship uh, with it. Hope you like Cheerios. Yeah, so you either eat the Cheerios there or you're going to have to get rid of them. So the individual boxes are going to be really great. Uh, and that's universal. If your kid likes Kellogg's uh, brand stuff, then more power to you. You can grab it from uh, Cabana's up mm -hmm. on uh, the pool deck. Um, but if they like a certain brand of cereal, then you're probably going to have to look for the factory sealed kind. Yeah. So, Speaking about food, um, if you need pureed food mm -hmm. for your small one they will bring it to you in the dining room mm -hmm. um we had our server christian on the fantasy say hey if we wanted something for bella at that point she was she, eating, eating everything solid, yeah but you know if it's your kid's first cruise he's like six months old and still needs something you know pureed carrots or broccoli like that. stuff like that let them know the night before and they will have it for you at dinner the next night mm -hmm. again it, it speaks to the level of service that you receive when you're on a disney cruise 
you can bring sealed baby food on, but yeah. this takes up a lot of space. And and they do sell some in the gift shops, but you know, just dining room food. Mm -hmm. Just ask for it and <laughs> call it good. Exactly. Um, and more food. Um, so picky eaters. We actually kind of, we already talked about this one. Yeah, um, I think we've talked about this one pretty well in depth. If your kid wants something specific, or ask just, for it. Yeah, or they're just tired of main dining room food. Ask for it. Yeah. Easy they'll, thing. They'll bring it. Um, Laundry rooms, they are available on our full, all four ships, mm -hmm. and they come in handy. Yeah, they do. Um, we don't like to pack too much. We take about half the clothes we'll need, and then we do laundry halfway through the, mm -hmm. sh the uh, on the ship. And it just takes up less space and makes things easier. Yep. Um, there are laundry rooms on decks two, six, and seven on the Wonder and the Magic. Mm -hmm. And then I'm fairly certain that most state most decks with state rooms on the bigger ships have them. Mm -hmm. um, I say most because there's not a laundry room on deck like eleven, yeah. but there are state rooms there. Yeah, and all of these laundry rooms are equipped to accept your key to the world card, so you they can charge only accept your key. Yeah. Okay. So you can, some of them, the newer ships have tokens. I think the newer ships actually just got upgraded to uh, the new token system. So you purchase tokens with your, uh, digital tokens with your Key to the World card, and then they're loaded to your entire stateroom. So if I uh, purchase two wash tokens and two dry tokens, um, and I, Miria goes and puts the laundry in the dryer, her key to the world card will have those dryer tokens, so that's really cool. Yeah, there was one day that I started the laundry and mm -hmm. then we went up and finished our laundry. Yeah, and the cool thing, they do have uh, laundry softener and soap available for purchase as well. Um, for us, what we do is we take laundry pods and we take a container of those so that they don't get crushed. And we take how many ever we estimate we're going to need for yeah. the, the trip. And usually we're right on with what we need, barring any... Uh, surprise uh, yeah. laundry. Yeah. We did have a situation where we had to be credited back for. <laughs> yeah, it was really the weird. Machine the didn't machine work. didn't work. It took my credit, but it didn't work. So, but it was a really simple process. Um, I just called guest yeah, I called services. guest services right from the laundry room, gave them all the information. They said, okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, it, they actually immediately shut it down uh, digitally. And credited me the the tokens, and I went up and moved to a different. Yep, machine. I moved to a different machine. Really easy. Um, yeah, laundry yeah. rooms. They're really beneficial. Keep in mind though that on sea days they do get crowded. They yeah. are also crowded on formal night because There's people are ironing yeah. their clothes. Um, peanut butter and jelly. If your child likes peanut butter and jelly, you can order Uncrustables from room service. What? Um, it's not listed on the room service menu, but they They're are available. Mm -hmm. So just ask. They're really good for a quick snack. So passports. This is an issue that really gets me. Oh, my child's too young. I'm just gonna have to get him another passport in five years. Let me tell you, both of our children have passports. Mm -hmm. We just had to renew Christian's passport. His old passport picture and his new passport picture look nothing, nothing alike. alike because he was nine months old when he got his first passport. Okay. Yep. But it's not a, we don't say get a passport because it, you know, you can't use anything else. We say it because in the event that something happens and there's a medical emergency with your family, you can't fly back into the United States without a valid passport and then there's oh what about a passport card those don't work you can only drive <laughs> yep. with a passport card so for us we we spend the extra money to have that peace of mind knowing that no matter where we are in the world when we're on cruises we have a way of getting home mm -hmm. no matter what um, we don't have to spend the extra time with their birth certificates at the u.s embassy trying to get a passport expedited mm -hmm. uh, down now Mind you, yes, you can get on a closed loop cruise with a birth certificate and valid ID. If you're over 16. If you're over 16. If you're 16 or so. Yeah. But again, 
get the passport. Yeah. It's a it, little extra money, but it again, it's peace so of worth mind. it. Um, and I have seen that a lot, at least a couple of cruise lines have started to make it that even for a closed loop cruise, they will not let you board without a passport. Yeah. And like I said, peace of mind in case something happens, you know you can get home. Exactly. So. Because you don't want to be stuck somewhere. Mm-hmm. Or like uh, last year when um, the hurricane came through and some closed loop cruises became not closed loop cruises because ships could not go back to Florida yep. and they wound up in mm -hmm. New Orleans and it was no longer a closed loop cruise and people could not get off the ship. Yep. Better safe than sorry. I don't remember exactly what a passport costs right now, but it's worth it. Yep. <laughs> it's worth it. So uh, we have two final tips that they kind of tie into each other a little bit. So the next one is don't wait. Don't wait until your child is going to quote, remember it. What does that even mean? I don't remember every detail from our last cruise. I don't mm -hmm. remember every detail of two days ago. Yep. So don't wait until they're old enough to remember it because you're going to remember it. Mm -hmm. You're going to take so many pictures and videos and you're just going to soak it all in watching your child meet Mickey or walk onto the ship for the first time. Mm -hmm. We were those people who said we were never going to do Disney World with a baby. We weren't going to cruise with a baby. And look at us now. Yep. We, we've gone back on all of those and haven't regretted it at no. all. I mean, Christian's taken eight cruises, and mm -hmm. he's six. He just turned six this week. Yeah. So it, it's definitely worth it to see the look in your kids' eyes when they first meet Mickey, uh, the different expressions that they have. It. it you've seen the videos him. that Isabella had with meeting characters, and it, it's just magical. Your you, your kids may not remember it, but, but you, will. you will. And it's fun to look back, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, when. On this day, stuff pops up on Facebook, and I'm like, look, Christian, look at this. This was four years ago, or, you know, mm -hmm. and he likes to look at it. Bella likes to look at it now, too, yeah. from stuff when she was younger. They will, they may not remember it, but, but. you will. Mm -hmm. And Christian still likes to talk about our cruise from last year. Mm -hmm. Christian still likes to talk about our last two cruises, and he likes to help us plan for the next cruise. Yeah. So, so that speaks to get your kids involved, and... If you keep them involved, then they're gonna they're gonna remember it for longer. Mm -hmm. So the last thing is just remember there, there is age requirements. an age requirement. So for most cruises, the age requirement is six months old. Okay, your child must be six months old at the time of sailing. Yes. However, for longer sailings like the Panama Canal or Transatlantic that have more than three sea days. I think it's three or more sea days in a row, your child must be one year mm -hmm. old. 12 months exactly, or they cannot sail on those sailings. Yep. So once your kids are old enough for that, get on the ship. Well, you know, once all this stuff's over and we can sail again. Mm -hmm. um, and for those of you that may not have a child at the time of booking, but you're expecting, make sure that you call and get your child on that reservation. Well, no, we just well, booked with a fictitious oh, birth date. Birthday. Be, it has to be a, a date that has already happened. Mm -hmm. And then you can call Disney and say, hey, I need this birthday changed once your child is born. We, mm -hmm. uh, Bella's first cruise, we booked before she was born. Mm -hmm. We had a general idea of when, when? she was going to be born, which didn't happen. She came four weeks early. <laughs> um, but we put a birth date that had already you know, occurred. Mm -hmm. When we booked the cruise and we called and we said, hey, kid's born, change his birthday, please. And mm -hmm. they said, okay. Yep, it's not, not hard at all. But make sure that you put them on the reservation, especially if you're expecting. Because um, if you're a family of three right now and you're about to be a family of four, but you book as a family of three, then... You can add a guest later, but, but it will change the price to, you know, the current... Uh, sailing fare price but you might not also be able to be in that stateroom anymore because yep. it is all based on lifeboat space availability mm -hmm. 
Yeah. It, it may not be that your room can't accommodate for it. It may be that your muster station can't accommodate an extra person because it's already filled mm -hmm. with the allotted people. So you have to change to a different room in order to be in a different uh, muster station. So, so be aware of that. you're, you know, this cruise is going to happen when my kid is eight months old. Or we thought Bella was going to be eight months old. Mm -hmm. And she was nine months old. Um, and you're like, all right, I really want to go on this cruise. And baby whatever. Well, we knew what her name was going to be. So um, we were able to do that. Sorry, dog knocked over my water. Um, and, you know, book it. Just as long as your child is going to be old enough. Because yep. we have seen some people <laughs> that are planning on going on our next sailing, which is Panama Canal, mm -hmm. where you have to be at least 12 months old to sail. And they are hoping, or they were hoping, yeah. that their child was born by a certain date this year so that they would be one for that. Yep. So, uh, just be cognizant of those those age Don't promise. book it too close yeah. if your child is not born yet. And much like with the kids club, Disney is very, very uh, rigid when it comes to yes. these dates. If they are, they literally, your kid could be a day, of, their birthday could be the next day uh, that you're on the ship. Nope. If they are, that? if they are not one year old or six months old at the check-in time, then they will not allow you to get on the ship. Yep. Simple as that. So just be aware of those yeah. things. So clearly we have a little bit of experience sailing with small people. Yeah. Um, we hope this helps or yeah. that, you know, we were at least slightly entertaining. <laughs> um, and I think next week we might be doing our big 70 tips to make your cruise go swimmingly. Um, so if, you know, you enjoyed listening to us ramble for the last 45 minutes, give us a like. Subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next week. Yeah, and if you guys have ideas on what you want to hear us talk about uh, Next or you want us to put it in our queue, please let us know in the comments yeah. that way we can we can form something up and get ready for it So see you guys next week. Bye